Hi guys, how are you doing? I hope you're well. This is a new video series that I'm starting and in this video series we'll be building a complete restaurant management system using Golang. So we'll be building the backend only. Now um, a lot of uh, you have been asking me that you know you've taught me how to build an authentication system using Golang. Uh, so there's a authentication Golang uh, JWT series, right? And then I've shown you how to use, uh, how to build a different type of CRUDs, right? And like to-do lists and uh, book management system, those type of CRUDs. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you actually build a real world application? How do you combine authentication along with uh, a complete CRUD, which has multiple relationships amongst them to build an actual project? So this is what we're doing right now. We're uh, In this project, we'll have authentication, we'll have complete JWT authentication, all of that. And we'll have a complete, um, you know, model system. Uh, by model system, I mean like, you know, having all these different relationships between different things to create a complete re restaurant management system. So let me uh, let me explain to you what we're going to do. And I'll give you a small demo also of the, of the project as well. So uh, we'll have a menu and the menu will have name, category, and ID. So we can have different categories of menu. So let's say there's a slider menu, there's a burgers menu, there's a you know smoothies menu. So all menus will be different. And each menu has multiple food items. So the food items will have a name, price, and ID. Now, uh, obviously these um, you know data structures that I've created here are not complete in the sense I've not shown you that food also needs to store the menu ID. I've not shown you here that, but I'm just giving an idea of uh, you know what it's going to be like. These are not the exact uh, schemas uh, for the for the DB right now. It's just for representation only. So don't uh, you know um, like get into the technicalities because I'll actually uh, you know uh, we'll actually think about the actual schemas uh, in the in the project. So uh, so food item will have uh, the menu ID. Basically the menu has basically the menu has multiple food items, and uh, then there is a table in a restaurant. You also have a table, right? So each order that is placed, uh, you know, has a table ID. So orders are placed for a table, right? And orders also have order items. So order items also store the order ID, right? So order items are basically, um, you know, food items basically. So like they'll have the quantity of the food item, the unit price and ID. So in every order, you'll have order items, which will basically a food item with a particular quantity and the complete price. And it'll have an ID of its own. And then you have the invoice. So invoice is created for each order, right? And that has its own uh, different things like payment method and payment status and all of those different things. And order also has order date, right? So this is the entire structure. It's quite uh, straightforward. We also have users and you know authentication, all of that, like I told you about. So we have all of that. And the, the core of that will, all, will be very similar to what we have built in JWT and Golang authentication series. So I'll be rebuilding it in this series. But if you've done that series, you can completely skip it and completely come to this part, right? I don't want to skip it completely because there, there could be many people who have not done it and then they'll get completely confused. So I will not go very, uh, so in this video series, I won't go into complete depth of uh, you know, uh, building the entire, uh, like explaining to you the, the entire uh, authentication system. I'll just build it quickly. And then uh, mostly I'll be focusing on this entire part, right? How to make these models, how to give these references and how to have the entire APIs for all of these different things. So I hope this is clear. And um, there, there could be a lot of background noise right now that you could be hearing is because um, I'm not sure if you guys know that I'm from India and I'm right now I'm uh, taking a vacation. I'm in Goa. So there'll be a lot of uh, background noise of uh, different type of birds, it's I'm living in a complete jungle. So, <laughs> so I hope you can, uh, you know, uh, understand that. And, uh, and I hope that's not a problem. So anyways, so now let me give you a demo of the project. So let me take you through the entire project. This is a small collection that I've created. And here are the re different requests. And right now we are keeping things to a minimum, but uh, we'll have many more requests here in this collection. Now, uh, I have my server running on port 8000. And I'll have to create a new name. So I'll say Akhil456 and Sharma, blah, 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 blah. And I'll change the email address as well. And I'll change the uh, phone number as well. And then I'll just uh, click on sign up. So as you can see, it has inserted uh, this user into the database and it's given us this new inserted ID and now we'll log in to log in we'll use this password from here and 
and we'll use this email address that we've just used to sign up and we'll receive the token as you can see we'll copy this token and keep it and now we'll add the menu to add the menu we must send the token and we'll create a new menu slider menu with has, which has category food so it's given us an id and now to add a food item it requires the menu id so we'll take this menu id we'll send it in the food item and let's call it chicken let's just call it uh, vegan sliders price $25 so it's saying the error has ex so the, the token has expired that's because we didn't uh, copy and paste the token here the new one in this particular API so we'll copy and we'll paste and add food item the new token and we'll send it so you get an inserted ID for food item as well similarly uh, you'll have get table get orders I'll show you all of them when we start building these API's all right uh, it's going to be quite straightforward I'll you know we'll so we'll together uh, you know um, together all of us will think about the right fields to keep in all of these different schemas how to connect them and then we'll also write the API's as in what all API's are required since if we don't require delete API or edit API sometimes we'll just skip them but if they are really critical, we'll keep them all right for uh, most of these uh, different modules. So these are our different modules. We'll have to create APIs for all of these different modules. All right. So that's how the entire project is uh, kind of set up. So I hope you're excited to learn and I hope you're going to, uh, you know, learn a lot of new things. So uh, let's get started. And since um, so this is the first uh, video of the series, so uh, we'll get started, but I'll, you know, start it in a different video altogether. I hope that's all right. Um, so let's let's get started uh, in, in the sense like let's get started with the series, right? Because I'll show you how to start coding in the next video. So thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel so that you come to know when the next video of the series comes out. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.